Hello, welcome to another video and today we're going to look at uh, the lower abdominal uh, exercise that we use as a test and the various uh, regressions if you struggle to do it, which most people do, and the progressions if you can do it fairly well and, and we'll also discuss if you should even be doing it. Um, so firstly, um, I'm using a blood pressure cuff here, which as you can see on the ground there, um, now most people don't have access to one of these so and that's fine you can easily use your hand under your back to replicate the same thing um, what you don't want to do is actually have a flat back so you don't want to flatten your back dead flat on the floor which is uh, what you might see in, often taught in Pilates that they call the imprint you don't, you don't want to do that you still want to have a neutral curvature in your spine that's where you can use your, roughly the your, your size of your hand is round about an average for most people's um, natural curvature. The blood pressure unit just can make it exact. Um, so you can pump it up to 40 on the um, on the dial here, and then when your legs come up into the air, you've got to try and maintain it on 70. Um, and if it goes below 70, you fail. So basically, like the test is done with bent knees, and you're lowering your hips to the floor, and the feet will just touch the ground. So mistake I often see people make with this is they don't they don't move their hip at all they just go knee, knee flexion they just go up and down with this um, obviously that's a fail because that's you, it's really about testing the hips ability to when it's lowering to there whether or not that your back will arch to do that so this is where if you're on the blood pressure unit you would see the the uh, the pressure coming off the cuff as you're lowering the legs so as you go through there you would see a lot of people lose their, their lumbar stability. Um, now, that could be for two reasons. And firstly, they may have a poor method of creating stabilisation where they're pushing their belly out. All right, so if they're pushing their belly out, obviously that's going to that, that's, that's going to um, raise this lumbar spine. It's, it's not a, a good way of stabilising at all. The second reason is maybe the hips are... are dominating the movement so the abs are actually being inhibited and when the hips um, are trying to create the stability for you what happens is it because the TFL muscle it produces anterior tilt when it contracts so it produces an anterior pelvic tilt so it means that your your method of stabilization um, is compromising that and there's an example of me doing it where I've just lost it um, your your method of stabilization this is why people uh, by the way when they hold your feet and you do a sit up like that that's why you can do a hundred sit ups like that but barely be able to do ten when you, with, without your feet lifting off the ground because your hips are actually doing a lot of the work for you so this this exercise is trying to t teach you to not use your hips um, one of the, the main reasons why I prefer this than the, the normal crunch if you can see the whole time my chest is in extension. My head and my my head's very neutral, and I'm really trying to work on keeping my neck pulled in so I don't have my head tilted back. Um, this this is good because it stops my rectus abdominis on the top part of the of, of the abdominal from doing all the work, which usually puts us in flexion. So so usually putting us in in this position. All right. This exercise is actually trying to train the strength of the rectus abdominis but without using trunk flexion so it's really working on the the weaker part which is around the hips and the pelvis now if you struggle to do it this is the regression so there's there's two regressions this first one you keep both feet on the ground and you just move one leg at a time so basically you only need half as much strength right so it's a much easier version than the two legs at the same time this would be where most people might have to start so they can learn how to get their abdominals to do what they're supposed to do um, the second part of this is the second regression is where you start with your legs in the air but you still only lower one foot at a time so so you'll see I was going to do two but um, yeah so now I'll just do one leg at a time all right so it's slightly harder than starting with both feet on the floor but it's not as hard as moving both feet to the ground um, all right so if you can once you sort of got those two progressions you go back to your test and you see if you can maintain your pressure. Um, another important point here, if you're watching carefully, my arm out to the side, if you notice my palm is turned up and, and my arm is sort of out on this angle, very important to do that and not have the arm on the side here, especially with the fingers pointing down. That, that's really bad, all right, because 
again, that'll help your thoracic and your upper rib cage to curl over and give you the impression that you're doing the test well when, when in fact you're really not. Right, so if you can handle that test, then you can move to the next stage, which is um, going with the straight legs. So basically by straightening the legs, you're, you're increasing the lever. And the, and the lever on the, on the lower back and the abdominal muscles is significantly greater. So many people can't do this. This is very rare for many people to do this. I see this done in boxing classes a lot, and it's done very poorly. All it will do is ruin your back. Um, and this brings me to the next point. Some people should not be doing this exercise at all. If you are a flat back type person to begin with, and if you have a bulging disc or a hip impingement, I wouldn't be doing this exercise. If you're a person with that posterior tilt already in a natural standing position, this exercise will make you worse. So I would be avoiding using this exercise for people like that um, and, and really teaching them how to generate um, anterior, more anterior tilt. So um, now, if you've got the, the last lot of exercises down pat, um, and then you want to incorporate into a standing position now this is where it can be very useful for the hip impingement person because it's not so much about the load on the abdominals here, it's about the, the um, understanding how to main, remain neutral in a sort of a walking running phase. So it's a bit awkward where I've done it here, I've got it against the pole and it's not ideal. It's better against a door frame but just for the sake of the video so you can see it, um, I've got it here. But So basically we do, it's that we just put it in that lumbar curve again and you try and find your, your nice neutral, you get your, your gauge all sorted out, 40 is the neutral when you start. Now now where I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going into hip extension like when I walk and run and I'm trying to maintain that neutral curve. All right. Now this also is the same thing when my knee comes up, I don't want to sort of, this is where you'll see that lumbar disc purge and especially the hip, the butt gripper, they'll curl out when that hip comes up to there, they, their back goes into, into a flexion, all right? So this can be a very very good exercise for teaching good hip control, all right? So you can sort of see there, you can sort of see quite clearly that my, my back is not like flexing at any point and almost wanted to there. And then I say I have to bring my head back as well so I don't fall down. So right at that point there, I've got to, I've got to try and keep that. I'll just bring it back for you. So right at this point here, I've got to work hard to keep that, that hip sitting right in the socket there because I know for me that, I, that it'll want to sort of move up like this and my butt will tuck under. I don't want that because that's when you'll get the hip and groin sort of snaps um, and that's just ruining good hip control, right? So when it's, when it's um, kicking back, so when I, when I kick back here, that's where the glute max will start to fire if I was actually walking or especially if I was running. All right, so I'm learning to get good hip control um, and, and keeping the abdominals on the go so my spine stays in neutral. All right, so that's, that's an explanation of the lower abdominal from floor to standing, um, regressions, progressions, and everything you need to know about this exercise. Um, I prefer it to the upper abdominal training any day. Um, just has so much more carryover to all the problems we see with hips and backs um, and again it's all staying in neutral it's not going into flatness you can sort of again see how my chest is held upright all the time here so I'm keeping a nice posture throughout I've got the neutral curve even with hip flexion and hip extension I'm controlling it in every direction all right so great ways to sort of do it abdominal the, the blood pressure cuffs useful tool if you've got one but if you don't you can just use your hand be, be in your back there to give you a bit of a guide all right so i hope you enjoy that and we'll see you on our next video